The New York Rangers draft is now complete. They ended up taking four players in this year's 2024 NHL draft. They ended up taking a first round pick with number 30 overall, a fourth round pick with number 119, a fifth round pick with number 159, as well as a sixth round pick with number 191 overall. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you all a scouting report slash player breakdown on all of these players. So Let's get right into it here. Starting off with the first player, EJ Emery was taken with the first round pick, number 30 overall. And I am very happy with this selection. I actually did a full kind of prospect scouting report slash breakdown on EJ Emery, going very in depth on him in the previous video. So definitely go check that out if you have not already. But quickly to kind of recap kind of what he can bring. He's a more defensive defenseman, six foot three, 185 pounds, right-handed shot there, plays on the right side, doesn't turn 19 until March 30th. So fairly young prospect. He is committed to the University of North Dakota next season at the D1 level, so a very good program. And he's just an all-around elite skater, elite athlete, very mobile defender there, pretty physical, good puck mover, needs to work on his offensive game, but very, very talented defensively. And this past season played at the National Development Program in the U.S., ended up having 61 games played, 16 assists, no goals there, a plus 34. And against the USHL team there with the National Development Program junior team there, he ended up having 27 games played, 6 assists, plus 5 there, not too bad at all. And also played with Team USA winning a silver medal at the U18s, where he had 7 games played, 6 assists. I got to watch all those games. They played quite fantastic there. But like I said, if you want a more in-depth kind of analysis and breakdown on his kind of play and overall what he can bring definitely go check out my previous video which will be linked at the end of this video so definitely if you've not already stay tuned to the end here and definitely check out that video on the first round pick by the new york rangers but taking a look here at the rangers next pick the second of four here we have in the fourth round there was actually a trade up for this player from pick number 127 which was the rangers fourth rounder they ended up using a seventh rounder in 2026 to move up to pick number 119 to select Raoul Boyard, a French-Canadian guy playing in the QMJHL for Bay Como Dracar, who were a very good team last season, ended up having a pretty decent playoff run, and Raoul was definitely a big part in that, but he's kind of seen as a bit of a possible steal here as well in the fourth round, pick number 119. A lot of people kind of had him as that, perhaps to be even like a late second rounder to an early third rounder. Consolidated ranking, he had him number 70, Lee Prospect, 67, Bob McKenzie, 85, Craig Button, 84. We have McKeem's Hockey, 57, FC Hockey, 81, Daily Faceoff, 86. So a lot of people had him quite a bit higher. Even Bukala of Sportsnet, they had him at 60. So there are a lot of people that were quite high on this prospect, seen as a possible second or even third rounder. And obviously getting him in the fourth round there in the middle there is not too bad at all. That is pretty great value. So I think using that seventh rounder to go up to get him is not a big deal at all. A fourth rounder and a seventh to get a you know second or a third round caliber prospect is quite nice work here by Chris Drury. I think he's a very talented prospect here. He's got good size, you know, being six foot one, 189 pounds. He's obviously you know left-handed shot there, a centerman. He is known as having a decent little two-way game there, really good playmaker, great vision as well. So overall talented offensively, a quick decision maker, solid distributor on the power play. He ended up being a very, very good face-off taker last season in the QMJHL, one of the best face-off guys in that entire league, ended up finishing the season with a 57.6 face-off win percentage, which is very, very good. Great face-off guy, solid two-way game. You know, defensively, can definitely work on his game there, but not bad at all defensively. Needs to work on his skating a bit, but not too bad there. But the main thing with him is kind of on projection, I would say, is about kind of a third-line guy being a solid two-way player with some good playmaking skills. Maybe ends up getting on the power play, but more than likely, he's just going to be a very solid kind of third or fourth-line guy at the NHL level one day. Possibly having a really good kind of two-way game there, being a really good kind of playmaker as well, possibly. And the next year, in the QMJHL is definitely got to keep an eye on. Jakar going to be a great team more than likely once again, and he definitely could be a massive part in that team, possibly going on a long playoff run once again. And they did end up getting first place by a long shot in the entire OHL as well. They ended up finishing with 109 points, the next closest team in the entire league 
ended up having 102, so a pretty big gap there. They also finished 17 points up on the next closest team in their conference, which was Halifax with 92 points. They had 109 there. They had a great season. They also made it all the way to the QMJHL finals, but unfortunately got swept there by Drummondville Voltigeurs, who had a pretty good Memorial Cup run there. But in general, he was on a phenomenal team, and he was definitely a massive part in that. So hopefully Aro can help his team make a long run in the playoffs once again. Like I said, they should be a pretty solid team this next season coming up as well. But taking a look here at his stats, this past season ended up having, in the regular season, 68 games played, 22 goals, 40 assists for 62 total points with a plus 27 there. Good two-way game. Great playmaking skills, like I said. Very good playmaker. Putting up some pretty good numbers there. Almost a point per game for uh, you know 17 turning 18-year-old is not too bad at all. And in the playoffs, had 17 games played there. Played all the games. Four goals, four assists, eight points, plus five. But half point per game there. So not too bad there at all points-wise. Pretty solid there. Good power play guy. Great playmaker, like I said. Definitely has a decent bit of upside there to possibly be a pretty solid center at the initial level one day for the Rangers. And next up here, we have Nathan Aspinall, who was taken with the fifth round pick number 159 overall. And this is a massive prospect. The Rangers seem to love taking these big prospects who are absolute giants out there on the ice. And they take another one here, Nathan Aspinall of the Flint Firebirds in the OHL, Brennan Othman's former team. This player is a six foot seven. 190 pound, a left winger, very, very tall there, six foot seven. Last year, the Rangers took Dylan Rubrek, another massive six foot seven forward prospect, and they take another one in this year's draft. Both those guys out of the OHL. Very interesting prospect there. I've watched him a little bit as well. I am a Canadian Rangers fan, so I watch a decent amount of the OHL. Watched him a little bit there. Solid prospect. He did not have the best overall offensive production, and we'll take a look at the stats in a bit, but he's obviously a massive six foot seven guy, so there is some upside to his game. He's definitely still a very raw prospect, has a long way to go before he'd ever you know hit the NHL level, but definitely a bit of upside there being six foot seven. You cannot teach that size. So drafting a guy like that, he's a developmental prospect here, but definitely has a decent amount of little upside there for a guy of his size. And taking a look here at where he was ranked by some draft sites, McKean's Hockey had him number 240, FC Hockey 251, NHL Central Scouting of North American Skaters 102, and Recruit Scouting 176. But when you're taking a prospect in the fifth, you know, sixth, seventh round, you're really just kind of throwing darts at the board there, hoping it hits, hoping the pick sticks there, obviously, and works out to be in your favor. And drafting guy at six foot seven there, he's a very raw prospect, but there's obviously a bit of developmental upside to him. So if you can get working with him, you can have a great year in the OHL for the next, I would say, probably two seasons. Maybe you can develop into a pretty decent prospect. We obviously tried that with a guy like Rubrec, and so far, he's looking like a very talented prospect. Ended up having a breakout season, being over a point per game this past year, and I think definitely a guy like Aspinall will hopefully have a breakout season like Rubrec did last year. Hopefully Aspinall can have one in this upcoming season. But taking a look here, he ended up having an alright season. The overall numbers weren't fantastic on a solid OHL, you know, Flint Firebridge team there. They ended up finishing 8th in Eastern Conference, got swept by the London Knights, won the entire OHL last season in the first round so not the best playoff run but he ended up having 65 games played 18 goals 16 assists 34 points there over half a point per game not bad but not great ended up having four games in the playoffs there one goal one point got swept there dash five so not the best overall offensive production but there definitely is some developmental upside with a guy who is six foot seven and has his kind of overall abilities which are pretty good as well he does have some pretty decent scoring upside possibly he's got good hands he's good around the net there and in close so obviously that kind of works in together. Very good at deflecting pucks in front of the net there, screening the goal, you know, deflecting the pucks kind of like Kreider does. Obviously not quite at that level, but has a good overall kind of ability to tip pucks in there, deflect the pucks while he's screening the goalie and kind of around the net. He's also a pretty good playmaker there, has uh, some good playmaking ability, good vision there. And I would say probably projects as a, you know, more of like a bottom six kind of guy. I don't think has that true kind of upside of being a top line or top, you know, six kind of forward, but maybe he could be a pretty solid player for the range one day in that bottom six with a six foot seven frame. And next up here, we have a prospect by the name of Rico Gredig, who was taken in the sixth round with pick number 191 overall. He is a Switzerland born prospect, a Swiss guy there. He is an overager as well, 19 years old, turning 20 in February. So about a year older than most prospects. Last year was his you know first year being eligible for the draft. He's a six foot one, 179 pound left wing slash center. 
And there's not a lot on this guy as well. I can't say I've really watched a ton of him. I obviously do watch a lot of the World Juniors, but he did play at the U18s and U20s for Team Switzerland. But I can't say I know a whole lot about this guy. I'm going to be honest here. He uh, is a guy who's playing for HC Davos over in Switzerland. Played for their junior team as well as their you know main senior squad as well. Did all right there as well. Put out some decent numbers. Ended up having a total of 28 games played with their senior team in the top Swiss League, which is one of the better leagues in Europe. Two goals, two assists, four points. Not terrible for a kind of a young guy, but obviously he is a bit of an overager. He is like, you know, a draft plus one year kind of guy. So a bit of an older prospect. For the junior team, though, in the U20 over in Switzerland, had 17 games played, 7 goals, 8 assists, 15 points. Not phenomenal numbers there, honestly, for an 18-year-old who turned 19 throughout this past season. For the U20s there, of uh, at the World Juniors, ended up having 5 games played with Team Switzerland, 1 assist, 1 point there. Not the best overall offensive numbers. There's not a lot in this guy, like scouting report-wise. And Gredig did sign a contract with HE Davos, who are one of the better overall teams in all of Europe, honestly, not just Switzerland, until 2026. So that's not too bad there. A pretty good team there he signed with for the next few years, at least. And the team manager, Jan Olsen of HE Davos, he kind of said this. You're kind of talking about the overall contract that he signed and kind of going long term with him. Emphasizes Gredig's great potential and believes he earned this contract with hard work. Quote, in just five months, Rico has worked his way up from the U-20 squad to the main squad. And when his ice time increased in recent weeks due to injuries, he seized the opportunity and showed us how far he can still go. And this is a prospect who does not turn 20 until February. So he should be eligible to play once again for the U-20 Switzerland team at this year's upcoming World Junior Championships, which that definitely should be fun to watch. They're trying to get more of a kind of an eye on truly what he can bring possibly to the Rangers one day at the NHL level but anyways thank you all so much for watching this video hope you have enjoyed this kind of rangers draft recap here i think they made some good selections and some kind of questionable ones here like rico gredig who there's not a whole lot on here so we'll see if this can be hit or miss here in the next couple years but either way it should be fun to watch these prospects in the coming you know years obviously to see how they do going forward but a guy like ej emery definitely has some very very high upside and like i said i did make a whole entire video just on him alone so if you want to check that out definitely go ahead it's popped up right now anyways thank you all so much for watching if you have enjoyed this video please smash the like button don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on these prospects and also don't forget to subscribe for daily new york rangers content thanks for watching i'll catch you next one bye